All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2006 BMW 325ci. Up front is a 2.5 liter inline six and down below is a five speed automatic transmission. If you'd like to read more of my thoughts, head on over to carmarshall.com slash overdrive. I'll be writing a complete article about the 325ci, but let's get back to that 2.5 liter inline six. Well, it's the smaller engine offered in this year in this platform. There was a three liter offered as well, but this is the 2.5. It's still a six cylinder. It's still smooth. It still retains that BMW inline six quirk that I love, which is that it pulls smooth throughout the entire power band. There's no real dead spots. That being said, it puts out about 190 horsepower, which through rear wheel drive power loss, you could do your own calculations. Yeah, it's not crazy powerful. It's not going to shove you back in your seat, but it is still a six cylinder. It still has more torque than a four cylinder and it's still a nice ride and it does pull pretty linearly. Paired to it is a five speed automatic. No real complaints here. It does have sport mode because this is the sport package. This car has the sport package, cold weather package and technology package, which we'll talk about more once we get to the interior. But I really don't have any complaints about the five speed auto. It's not the fastest shifting thing in the world. It's not the slowest. It's not really quite a slush box and I really don't mind it. I was interested to see how an E46 automatic transmission is because I've never driven an E46 in automatic. And honestly, I'm not disappointed, but I'm definitely not blown away. And last but not least, as I mentioned before, the E46 is rear wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four really nice gauges. I've always liked BMW gauges. I always think they're very clean and simple. On the far left, I have my fuel, then my speedometer, and on the right, I have my tachometer with an MPG gauge in it, and then my coolant temperature on the far right. Then I do get a little information readout down at the bottom, telling me my mileage, my trip odometer, and the outside temperature, as well as off to the right, I get what gear I'm in. On the steering wheel, I get track up and down, volume up and down, and my cruise control settings. I like the steering wheel. It feels good, it's a good size. It is sort of like a rubbery plastic sort of feeling. I don't mind it. To the left, I just have my headlight switches. Nothing too crazy there. Although the headlights are auto adjusting, so they actually will move slightly when you're going around corners and such to give you better lighting. On the door, I have my power mirror switches as well as I have a speaker, which this car does have the Harman Kardon speaker system, which I think is some of the best speakers you can get in a car. I'm a really big fan. Then we come into the center console. I have two heating and cooling vents, which Gone are the days of the E36 giant vent. Then I have an infotainment system. Now this is an aftermarket infotainment system. I can put the brand up on the screen. It looks great. It's really well integrated. It looks factory, but it's actually an Android system. I can't stress this is enough. This is not the factory system, but if you do have an E46, there are options out there to get a more modern radio, and this is one of them. Then I have my climate controls. I like the climate controls. They're relatively simple. Setting it to auto, the readout's kind of weird. It says that it's aiming for this temperature, but that doesn't mean it's exactly at that temperature. It's a little interesting to get used to, but no complaints there at all. But part of the cold weather package is heated seats, which are found down below here as well as tire pressure warning and traction control. Then I have my shifter, nothing too crazy here. It does have a leather shift knob. It feels nice. It feels like any other automatic transmission from the mid 2000s. Nothing really too crazy there, although it does have sport mode. Like I said, that's part of that sport package. Move it over to the left, shift it up and down however you'd like. Surrounding the shifter are your window switches. So BMWs do this. They put the window switches down by the shifter and I actually do have one touch down, one touch back up for either window, as well as one touch open for the rear windows, but not one touch close. Yes, those rear little windows do in fact open, which is pretty neat. Then down below the shifter, you just have your hazard buttons and your central locking. I really like the central locking button. I think all cars really should have central locking. Just hit it once and all the doors lock instead of fiddling on the door and such. So let's talk about the seats. The seats are power seats. That was part of the cold weather package is not only you got heated, but you did get power seats. That wasn't the only way to get power seats, but it is included in the cold weather package. I like the seats a lot. They're comfortable. They actually have adjustable. They're almost quad padding. I'm not quite sure, but 
I really like them. They are memory seats as well. You guys know I absolutely love memory seats because of the reviews I do. I don't feel bad moving the owner's seats. But speaking of seats, although this is the coupe, I do have rear seats, so let's do a back seat review. All right, so I'm in the back of the 2006 BMW 325CI, and the AC is off, and it's getting real hot. Uh, but not too bad of a back seat. I do have a little armrest here. I have like a little cubby hole down here, I guess. But other than that, I have lights. These windows do actually open. They kind of open up a little bit which is super nice. I mentioned that earlier, but it is nice that those actually flip out. Not too bad on leg room. The drivers, that is my driver's position. It would be a little bit more cramped. I actually, I'll see if I can find a video of it. I actually fell asleep in the back of one of these once on a road trip. Um, it wasn't even a road trip. It was a 50 minute drive back from Chicago. <laughs> but uh, I'll see if I can find the video. I actually did fall asleep in the back of one of these before. Um, so obviously not that uncomfortable of a back seat. I would prefer a sedan just because of the full doors and it's a little bit more roomy, a little bit nicer. Um, but for a coupe, these are not bad back seats at all. And overall the interior is decently nice. I am pretty happy with it. It smells like every single German car from the mid 2000s and it smells like melted crayons. I talked about this in my Jetta review. I've talked about this in other BMWs. I talked about it in my Mercedes review. I don't know what it is. If anyone knows exactly what it is with proof, if you can give me proof of why German cars smell like melted crayons, please let me know. But I like the interior overall. I like the light gray. I think it's very 2000s. It's sort of dated at this point, but the light gray does add this lightness, this sort of bright feeling over the interior. I know the sunroof also does help. I do have a sunroof, forgot to mention that, but I, I just like how light the interior feels. It doesn't feel so weighted down. So let's talk about the looks. I love E46s. This is the E46 chassis. I think it looks great. It might be one of my favorite chassis from BMW mainly because this is the one I grew up with. You know, this was really my coming of age chassis. You know, I loved Need for Speed, Most Wanted, so this was sort of the one to have. But I do think the car looks good in coupe or sedan. But speaking of coupes and sedans, 2006 is a very interesting year for E46s because at the same time that they were making the E46 coupe, so the two-door version looked like this, but the four-door version actually moved on to the next generation. It was a split year. So if you bought a two-door in 2006, it looked like this. But if you bought a four-door in 2006, it was an E90, which I'll show a picture. I have video of a coupe. I haven't filmed an E90 sedan yet, but essentially it looks the same. Just imagine it with four doors. Use your imagination. But getting back to it, I think the car looks great. I really do. And I have to say, I was interested to do this review for a couple of reasons. First of all, because of that year split. I think it's interesting between the coupe and sedan that they actually split. But I was also interested to drive an automatic 2.5 liter. Because I have done another E46 review before. I did do the E46 M3, but I also did the E46 330XI where it was all wheel drive, manual, and the three liter. So this is very different than the other E46 non-M that I drove. I like both of the cars, and of course, I think a manual would be more fun, but for a daily driver, this is comfortable. This has been maintained very well. It's clean. I think it looks great. I really love this generation of three series. Honestly, out of a daily driver, I can't really ask a whole lot more out of this. I would say that I would probably prefer a four-door just for practicality uh, because the back seats are a lot more usable with the four-door, but not 100% necessary. And again, this is my, I don't even know what number BMW review this is. I've reviewed a lot, a lot of BMWs. That's another BMW. I've reviewed a lot of BMWs here on the channel and every single time, I review one, I'm never disappointed. And even though this is automatic, even though this is 13 years old at this point, I still love it and I'm not disappointed by it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much, Roy, for letting me review your 325i. You gotta love a BMW, guys. I mean, really, I've never had an issue with a BMW. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. Cause aside from my soul I